I've just realized that I haven't done a video on this before and half the time I talk about the best credit cards you should get and how to earn the most points. So why not just go through the cards in my wallet and talk about how I make nearly 6,000 or 5,000 points a month with just typical spending. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jacob Fisher and it's Minute Monday, which means I need to go through and answer the question, what's in my wallet in just a few short minutes. I'm just gonna go through each one of my credit cards and how and when I use them and for what. All of the cards you could sign up for using my referral link down below, but you, you really don't have to do that unless you wanted to. Starting off with a card that's not actually in my wallet. I know, I'm sorry, but I had to include this one because I do own it and they had a great sign up bonus for 80,000 points when I signed up, so I had to do it. It's the Southwest Premier. Sorry, that's my find out. If you guys know where this is, comment, comment it below. But anyway, the Southwest Premier card, a great card for the sign-up bonus, and one of the only cards I've actually gotten because I wanted the sign-up bonus. The card overall earns 2x on Southwest purchases and one point on everything else, along with 6,000 points for Southwest every single year. This card with the incredible sign-up bonus has allowed me to get very close to the companion pass, and I might still be able to get it by the end of the year. Honestly, though, looking back, I probably should have gotten the priority card because that gives you four upgraded boardings and a $75 annual Southwest travel credit, effectively bringing the annual fee to lower than this one. That was just dumb on me. Moving on to the next card I use the most often is the American Express Blue Cash Preferred. I absolutely love this card. You can check out my full review in the corner. But this card offers you 6% on a grocery store and streaming purchases along with 3% back at gas stations and 1% on everything else. I already have $53 in rewards on this card despite me using another card for grocery purchases because they were having a special bonus that I'll mention later on. This card has a $95 annual fee and easily pays for itself and in fact it almost already did. Now that I'm using it more, I am sure it will get paid for by the end of the year, and I got it halfway through the year, which means I still have another six months to get a ton of cash back using this card. Great card, and again, make sure to check my video out on it. The other American Express card I have is the Platinum card, and even with that $550 annual fee, it does pay for itself. I use it to book all my flights because it offers 5X on flights purchased, and I use it for Southwest flights because most of the time you travel credit on this, that $200 actually pays for cheap flights from Southwest. I also get pre-check credit, lounge access, which I mean, they're all closed right now. Uber Eats credit and streaming credits until the end of the year. I haven't used the Saks credit yet and I probably will never end up using it. So that one's just a wash, but the other credits are fantastic. The Uber Eats credit, if I don't wanna cook for the night, oh, it's amazing. I just kinda order food from there and it's $15 off and then I got lunch for the next day as well. Woo, it's a win-win and I could probably go on on this card for a while and again, check out my video in the corner for how I effectively get, I think $700 of value out of this card at least. For all other travel and dining purchases, I use the Sapphire Reserve, which I will be downgrading once I use my travel credits for the year. I've already paid the annual fee and the 3X at dining I actually get on the next card I'm gonna talk about, another Chase card. I only use this card for dining and travel, and now that the Chase card gets the same bonuses pretty much except on travel, I think it's well worth it to downgrade this card and only go for 2X with the Sapphire Preferred with a much lower $95 annual fee. Now, of course, the $300 travel credit and $60 door dash credit, lounge access and pre-check on it are great, but again, lounge access on platinum, and pre-check on platinum. So this card's kind of about to be gone for me. It's been a great card and the transfer partners on Chase, I like way more than Amex. So I definitely need to keep a Sapphire card to keep getting points for them. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Chase Freedom Unlimited. Can't even show like any of the card because the numbers are in the front, which is what I use for pretty much all of my purchases. It's 1.5% back on everything. And then 3% on dining and travel book through Chase right now. Any random store I go to, I'm gonna use this with no annual fee. It's perfect to have around and with the new 3% category again, it's just gonna replace the Sapphire Reserve unless they add something big to it soon. Um, that card's about done. Though I do need to keep a Sapphire card around from Chase to make sure I can use the travel benefits and travel transfer partners because that's probably the biggest reason why I have Chase. 
I do actually have one more card and it's the Apple card and it's on my phone. I never actually got the physical card because I don't use it for anything other than my Apple store purchases. And I do like how they included, like if you wanted to buy a Mac, you could purchase it on the Apple card and pay for it month over month with 0% APR. I think that's something really cool that they added and I'm glad they did. Now I don't like Mac, I prefer Windows honestly, but if I ever were to go to Mac, it's just a great option that they have. And then I guess you have 3% cash back on Uber Eats. So that's the card that's kind of in my wallet, but also not at all in my wallet. I, you know, I use it though. That's everything that's in this wallet, a fun. I really like this color, it's from Bellroy. I think I bought all of my wallets from there. They provide relatively slim wallets. Now I've probably added too many cards, but you could get this if you want a slim wallet from a great made company than what I had before this. I had for six, seven years before I got a new one and I didn't even need to get a new one. It's just kind of wanted, kind of wanted a new blue wallet. Let me know down in the comments what you think of my credit cards and if I have way too many or not enough or if I should just keep going. I mean, options are endless. I make videos on travel and finance uploading every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, make sure you subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.